But he's kind of like the least favorite child, like if you had two children. And the choreography! The choreography! I hate it here! Oh. Hi, welcome. So today's video is a little bit new. It's something that I've never done before. So if you like it, please make sure to leave a like on this video. And you can also comment how much it's life changing or maybe not at all. I would love your honest feedback if I should do this as a monthly thing. As a content creator, when videos don't do well, I tend to tie it into my self-worth and then Kevin gets to hear all about it. It's honestly a whole mess. So if you like this idea, then let me know. And if you don't like it, you can also let me know so that I can put it back in to YG's dungeon where it potentially belongs. So basically today we're going to be tier ranking K-pop comebacks for the month of July. And apparently some June comebacks too because I have no concept of time. So let me explain to you our super fancy categories. At the very top we have song of the year. Now that's pretty self-explanatory but for me it's basically a song that was so good that I downloaded it. Now I'm so stingy with my downloads and I'm really picky with my playlist because I like to listen to the same songs over and over again. I will literally listen to the same five to six songs every single day, five times a day. Do you want to know what they are? I will tell you. Okay, I'll only tell you one of them because I'm basically going to ruin the list for myself. But I've been listening to Life's a Mess featuring Halsey by Juice World. Song of the year for me really needs to touch my heart for me to download it because I am so picky. Like I refuse to have songs on my playlist that serve me no good. I do not skip songs. I just listen to this. Do you know what I'm? Anyways, who fucking cares? So the category below that is called second gen vibes. Now this is highly regarded. However, it doesn't quite make the song of the year category. But we still appreciate these songs. We still love these songs. Songs. None of these songs are bad songs. I might have like a love-hate relationship in a certain level of disdain based on like a certain voting system that may or may not have occurred, but you know, that's not my circus right now. It's just missing that little extra something, but we still love these songs. The third category we have is YG's Dungeon. Now, I know I used YG's Dungeon earlier in the video in a kind of negative way, but this, don't worry, I will explain it. It's not that it's a bad song. We still appreciate these songs, but for me personally, it's a song that I wish I would have given more attention to, a song that I wish could have seen more of the light of day for me personally. I wish I could have given me songs more of a chance, but I ended up pulling a YG on them. <laughs> and then lastly, we have Not My Cup of Tea, which honestly, they are still good songs, and I still have a lot of good things to say about them, but I just don't particularly vibe with them. So now that we know our categories, let's start. Actually, I'm going to stop you right there because I want you to follow me on Instagram. I really, really, really want a swipe up feature, but just know that once I get that swipe up feature, I might not know how to act anymore. So here are all the songs. We have Thanks by ATs. We have Play by Tonga. Monster by Sergi and Irene. Villain by Alexa, What You Waiting For by Somi, Apple by GFriend, Inception by ATs, and as for the accidental June comebacks, we have Blackpink's How You Like That and Somi's Poratipam. And I've since decided to add Stray Kids God's Menu, Eyes One Secret Story of the Swan, and Weekly's Tag Me. And then we have two honorable mentions at the end of this video, so yeah. So the first song we are going to tier rank is Thanks, and I know it's kind of like a little bit of a cheat because it's not a title song, but uh, okay, um, it goes into song of the year. And the thing is, at this point I haven't seen the music video, the memory of this song lies solely in the first performance that they showed in their showcase. But in terms of, you know, the song and the performance, music video aside, I was so blown away. Like when I say I was blown away, I mean like... Something was ignited within me. Inception is a great song, no doubt. But Thanks marches to its own tune. Not only are the outfits super quirky, but the entire concept of this song gives me these colorful post-apocalyptic vibes. And that is one of my favorite concepts in K-pop. And the song itself is just so fresh and powerful and it's new and it screams ATs. It's something I've never heard or seen before done in this way and it really stresses me out how they put you know the fate of their title tracks into their fans hands right 
Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing marketing tactic, but at the end of the day, I feel like that's a lot of pressure to put on me, even though I didn't admittedly vote. Now I know how illusion enthusiasts felt. I would have voted for Wave if I was a fan back in the day. I remember hearing both of the songs and I was like, oh, Wave is a really, like, that's a really good song and I downloaded the song. And it ended up winning and I can't imagine if illusion had, I hate it here. Another thing, Hong Jung and San really said, we are four minute hot issue stands with their backpacks. <laughs> and on another note, the lyrics are just so repeatable, okay? Let's take a look. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. No thanks, I'm okay. Like it's so cocky and I love it and it talks about issues that I feel are so relatable. Inception, I didn't look at the lyrics yet, but I feel like it talks about romantic love. Ew, am I right? I love Inception, don't, <laughs> don't at me. Then we have like the yes sir, yes sir. Gosh, yes. And the choreography, <laughs> the choreography. I want you guys to tell me how you feel. I'm a thanks enthusiast. Feel really stressed out knowing that it could have been an era in and of itself. And I really am sad that KQ couldn't have edited the music video or done a little bit of refilming. And the thing is for me, let me know if you guys are the same, but I get really attached to certain eras, you know? And there's just eras that you look back on, like, I was literally about to cry, 21 missing you. It's such an amazing era, and you think back to outfits, you think back to stages. I hope we get a bit of that, I really, I really do. So let me know what you think, thanks, or Inception, and also, am I being too dramatic, or were some of you genuinely perturbed by <laughs> this sudden turn of events? Okay, so the next song we're gonna talk about is Play by Tonga. Now this is going to go into the category YG's Dungeon. Here's the thing, a really lovely song. I actually really like it, but it's sad to say that I never gave it like the time of day. I think I listened to it once and I was like, that's a good song. And then I never came back to it. And someone sent me a DM and they played it side by side to Mama Moose. I think it was egotistic and it sounded so familiar. And I remember thinking this sounds familiar and I can't put my finger on it. So someone, it was a Mama Moose song. <laughs> So yeah, definitely let me know if you noticed the similarity as well. I was quite shocked because like, again, I said it sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And it's definitely an interesting concept because it's kind of a mix between sultry and playful as well as colorful and dark at the same time. And also, I think it's interesting that Tangwo is featured on this song, but he's nowhere to be seen in the music video. Like you just see clips of <laughs> Tonga herself. And I feel like that's such a third gen thing to do. Either way, this song goes into YG's Dungeon. I should have paid more attention to it. <laughs> Moving on to Monster by Irene and Sergi, which is a Red Velvet subunit. This isn't a new show. Why do I need to say that? This song is going into second gen vibes, of course. And I actually made a whole review on this song. So if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave it linked down below if I can remember. And I think what really made this song so iconic for me was definitely the insect vibes. Now, <laughs> and in my review, I paired spiders into my theory of the insect vibes. Many people have pointed out to me that spiders are not insects, and I have seen many a documentary about spiders. This was a complete oversight on my part that I will never live down, so all of my anthropod enthusiasts out there, I'm so sorry. But anyways, they, my ears are ringing, someone is tweeting about me. But yeah, this goes into the second gen vibes category. Moving on to Villain by Alexa. So this unfortunately goes into the not my cup of tea category. And here's the thing, her vocals are so stunning. I think she has like a, such a sweet voice. And it's really beautifully showcased in this song. Do not get me wrong. However, you know, to be fair, it is a pre-release song. So it does kind of leave you wanting more. Um, but it kind of also falls into this kind of YG's dungeon category where I didn't really have the chance to give the song that much of a chance either. And given the sheer beauty of her vocals, I really do think that this song deserved a melodic, vocally based chorus. But also, I'm really waiting for like the title track. Like I'm really excited for the title track. I'm really waiting for the title track. Either way, like it is a really nice song, but I wish there was just like a little bit more to it. It just felt very, very similar to her other things. So it was a little bit hard to kind of distinguish for me personally. 
Moving on to Somi's What You're Waiting For. Now, can you guess it? Second gen vibes. I also made a video about this one, which you can check out as well. I just love how she's having fun with it, and I think I will do like an outfit review for this as well. Right off the bat, I'm noticing a lot of like, you know, very formal elements mixed with casual elements, which is, I really like those mixed together under the right circumstances. But overall, it seems like she's having a lot of fun with this, and she's just like branching out and doing her own thing, having fun on TikTok with her cat and like her friends. So this comeback gets to go in the second gen vibes category. Next up, we have How You Like That by Blackpink. Ha! Wait, I don't want to get a copyright claim. And I'm actually going to have to put this song in Song of the Year category. So I know there were so many people who were really conflicted about this song, but I actually liked it. Like, I woke up at, I think it was 5 a.m. Yeah, I woke up at 5 a.m. with my mom and watched it. Like, I don't know. That was like a nice memory for me. But like, it's 100% no shade to kill this up. I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. It's a step up from Kill This Love and I really appreciated the song. I think the choreography is just so quirky and so iconic and there is no denying the cultural impact that this song has. Like you you can't like you can try. But what's what's it gonna what is it gonna get you though? There were just so many elements that worldwide <laughs> were just so iconic, right? We have the modernized humbugs, we have Jenny's hair, which People now refer to it as Jenny's hair. I feel like before people were referring to it as like TikTok e-girl hair. And I also have like an almost 20 minute review on this song. So if you want to check that out as well. <laughs> Moving on to Apple by G Friend. Okay, this is like a tricky category because it's like, I like this era. Don't get me wrong. I love this era, but the song itself is not necessarily my cup of tea. So it goes into the not my cup of tea category. But like the styling, the concept, every single stage that I'm seeing is like top notch. And what's really great about the song? Okay, what's great about the concept in general is like, okay, do you want a goth concept? Here it is. Do you want like this angelic concept? Here it is. It's so multifaceted and so, what's the word? Leave it down below. Sometimes I feel like you guys just get me. I don't even have to explain what the word is. You will find it for me, right? No matter how different this is, it still maintains these whimsical elements that G-Friend is known for. So I don't exactly know how I'd classify their previous concepts. I feel like it would be whimsical. I feel like they do whimsical things. It's not really a cute concept, but it's whimsical and there's cute elements within whimsical. I should do my own video about concepts in K-pop. But this is like whimsical mixed with like these second gen sexy elements. So it's like not my cup of tea mixed with second gen. And the sound of it definitely kind of gives me kara vibes and I can't put my finger on it, but it, you just kind of feel that in your heart. And on that note of familiarity, um, I feel like I get dragged anytime I make any type of like parallel between TXT, BTS, and G-Friend, but we're gonna go for it. <laughs> Since a long time, people have been telling me that G-Friend and BTS are connected and I'm like, fucking how? But I digress. I feel like this could be the blood sweat and tears universe i don't know we have like this similar type of house and then we have this smoke scene that is similar to blood sweat and tears i don't know is it an homage is it just random i don't know just a thought to ponder i don't know <laughs> moving on to inception here's the thing i love inception wait the category second gen vibes but oddly enough i do have it downloaded on my phone so here's my playlist for those who care about which five to six songs that i'm currently binging Here's the thing, I love Inception, but it's kind of like the least favorite child, like if you had two children. I don't like children, I will never have children. <laughs> but please understand my analogy here. I'm just like a little bit bitter that it won at the expense of what Thanks could have potentially been. But it's still a beautiful song nonetheless, 100% second gen vibe. That's the first thing I thought of. And that's because it's melodramatic. Melodrama was 100% something that was very present. Someone's calling me. Where were we? Melodrama. So melodrama really defines second gen. You can't tell me otherwise. It was such a huge thing among boy groups. And then now I feel like this cool element is more popular. So it's like Thanks has that cool element that is definitely more hip, more trendy for today. But Inception would have been like a great second gen song. But I'm not mad. I like, you know, the take back to second gen. Do you know what I mean? Like, I still love them both. They're like my children. But like, I love one more. That... Mm, it's like my dogs, right? <laughs> 
everyone loves Kevin, but nobody knows that he has a sister, Maisha. She just doesn't have that star quality and it's not her fault. But my biggest pet peeve for this, the styling, kind of like this school aesthetic, just this black and white aesthetic. If you compare, okay, if we're just talking about styling, compare Thanks to Inception. Which would you choose? Obviously, thanks would win by like a mile, right? Look at me using miles. Where am I from? Styling means a lot to me. I have an unofficial degree in fucking couture, okay? Get off my d It's still highly regarded in my list. The vocals are beautiful. Just Tomo's voice in the chorus is breathtaking. Don't get me wrong. It's still an amazing song. I'm just like, you know, I like the concept for things better. <laughs> Okay, so the last one we're going to talk about, it was super tricky because it's like, it's really highly regarded. Of course, it gives me second gen vibes, but I also downloaded it and I can't stop listening to it. And that song is Pora Pipam. So this song gets song of the year because I downloaded it on Spotify. Now, a lot of people ask me for my Spotify and I'm like, I don't know how that works. I don't even know how I have a username. I, <laughs> I literally download free trials and then I cancel them or then if they have a special promotion, then I will pay like 99 cents for three months. But like to pay $10 a month. Oddly enough, one of my favorite aspects is definitely the title because it's kind of like a tongue twister and the way it's spelt in like the romanization is so cute and it translates to like purple lit night if i roughly translate it myself i'm sure there's <laughs> there are better translations out there somni just really has this ability to bring a certain level of eccentricity and quirkiness into her songs that are just unmatched in this current generation and it's obviously super catchy and the lyrics also evoke this feeling of non-permanence which ties into this notion of letting go of forever and i love a good existential crisis also i just realized now that it came out at the end of june so i kind of cheated by including it but it's honestly such a great song that i'm not even mad about it i'm also a sucker for a good color theme and i think the whole purple theme you cannot go wrong so it definitely goes into the song of the year category now we are going to move on to some honorable mentions which is basically the rest of the june comebacks so we have god's menu by stray kids which of course goes into the second gen vibes category i mean how could it not so this song honestly hits really hard in terms of sound and choreography. And honestly, because of this song, I'm kind of interested in Stray Kids now. Like, I feel like I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for whatever they come out with next. And honestly, the whole looking like a chef, I'm a five-star Michelin is pretty iconic at this point. And even the choreography move that goes with it, I thought was kind of a little bit quirky and I liked it. So let me know which songs I should look into in terms of like, stray kids discography because people say that if i like ats i would probably like them as well so definitely let me know then we have a secret story of the swan by eyes one which unfortunately goes into yg's dungeon now here's the thing i loved it so much more than fiesta but i just didn't have the chance to really listen to it and pay attention to it and kind of follow the stages like i even did for fiesta i don't even know why but it's still like an amazing song i just should have given it more attention and then we have tag me by weekly which gets song of the year because i haven't felt this way about a song in a really long time it is so cute and it makes me somewhat appreciate a school theme which says a lot trust me I feel like the vocals are kind of a mix of soft, cute, and powerful, and the desk choreography is definitely so innovative, and the song deserves the world, so it gets song of the year category. And then the last honorable mention is Happy by Niju, which I was pronouncing as Niziyu, but it's Niju. Like, it sounds like Niju, Niju. And this technically isn't K-pop, but it still gets song of the year category. And I've been listening to it non-stop. It just, it just like gives you that bubbly feeling. I don't know. Okay, so that is basically it for this video. Thank you guys so much if you made it this far. If you liked this video, please let me know. If I should never ever do this again, let me know as well. And I'll leave a little bit of a template in a pinned comment so you can also kind of tier rank these songs along with me. As for me, I'm going to get going. So don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this I'm gonna go get Kevin because he's crying. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. 
Are you upset too? So don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. You can also join my channel memberships by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button, and that way you can see what kind of tiers I'm offering, what kind of sneak peeks you could potentially get. These are the current members that make up my channel memberships. Thank you so much for your support. As for me, I'm gonna get going, so I will see you guys next time. Bye!